Hello my soccer universe, feeling a little bit under the weather today so my voice is not clear, have something in there so if something's not quite sound, sound, sound right it's definitely down to that. However I want to talk about what happened in England over the last two weeks you know since I made the last video uh, Everton fans can rejoice, you have not only a new coach, you don't have any, any new transfers but you have a win over Arsenal who actually had a terrifying last two weeks because the last time I said they're passing every single test, then they lose an FA Cup game to City. We'll talk about that. It was probably not the worst thing. But the loss to Everton, hmm, would have been worrisome if City wouldn't also lose their game. And so on top of the table, it all looks the same. As I said, we have quite some things to cover uh, in this video. We have three competitions of two cup competitions plus what happened in the Premier League on this weekend. But before we talk about all the action that happened uh, in these three competitions, I want to just pick out two main stories uh, to me. The first one, of course, is a transfer window where the Premier League already outclassed everyone and then one Premier League team outclassed everyone. And to be honest, the team, of course, is Chelsea. I actually would be more okay with the spending if I would see a little bit of a strategy behind all that. But at the moment the strategy is, ah, this is a hot young prospect, let's buy him for incredible amount of money, spread it all over uh, eight years, so we can kind of circumvent financial fair play. Although I think this is very short-sighted because this might come back to bite you, because for every single one that you are buying here, you know that you cannot sell this player to any other team outside of England because there's not the money there. And so you might be stuck with a relatively bad salary. So if this turns out to be a bust, I don't think this is working. And of course, uh, Graham Potter is having now so many players around him and then they even cannot get rid of Hakim Ziyech because they mess it all up. Uh, it just seems so random. I mean, um, I guess... If I was a, f uh, a true Chelsea fan, it's definitely a good sign that they are spending money again. However, I look at quite a few signings that they have made over the last few years and they were more misses than hits and all these big spending uh, acquisitions. I think the last one that really was so expensive that hit was actually Virgil van Dijk. Everyone else that was uh, around you know, the 80 and above million uh, euro mark never really made it or could be considered a veritable bust. So it's a high stakes game that they're doing. And to me, Graham Potter needs to be more Harry Potter than anything else. I think this is a, it's just mind boggling. And um, as I said, I don't see a plan because everyone knows they need a striker, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, you get Lukaku back, maybe under new coach, he might work. I don't know. I don't know what's hap hap happening. Uh, I don't think we can judge this even in the next few weeks. This has to come together. I just think that there are a few in there that uh, don't. don't make sense. I think uh, then they got Badia Schill in as a defender. But then they don't call him up for the squad for the Champions League. It's all nonsensically in, 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 in a way. And we really need to think about, you know, this with spreading it out. On one side, I see at the moment they're circumventing financial fair play that they can still play in Europe. On the other side, uh, this is gonna hit. This is gonna bite you in the back. Ask Juventus for that because they were doing stuff like that as well, uh, and it didn't really work out for them. So it's really, 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 really odd. Not a very good story to be honest and yes we want to see the stars playing together but i think i'd rather like to see a team that is well constructed like the teams of pep guardiola and jürgen klopp at least used to be and this brings me to my second point where i honestly it feels like the end of an era mostly for liverpool because what Liverpool has been showing as of late, it seems like uh, Jurgen Klopp cannot get his message across anymore. That the, the, the squad, although it's trying to refresh it, but it's getting a little bit tired of the same stick uh, that he has, which I think can reap great results, but seemingly it has gone stale. Can also be that, you know, not only was there a World Cup, but there was also a pretty long last season and that team is just gassed. I don't know yet, but to me, 
it looks a little bit like the end of an era. In addition, it might actually be the end of the era of the Manchester City v Liverpool rivalry because also Manchester City doesn't quite look right. They look in a much better position. I still think they have a good shot at, making, uh, at even getting the championship. But also Manchester City, uh, when you watch them play, they look lethargic. They don't look like the Manchester City, the undeniable class of Manchester, Manchester City, which is actually a great thing for the league because we have at least two new teams from last year's Champions League teams that uh, will move in there. One is, of course, Arsenal, who are set potentially on a title run, but at least a top four finish. But also Manchester United are in there. So two old guards. I don't say it, this will be the new uh, rivalry again, Manchester United against Arsenal, because I think City will hang, hang around. I'm just afraid that for Liverpool, I think they made some really good signings. But I think it will take some time and it may. And I actually don't hope for that. I really don't because I really like Jurgen Klopp and I think he fits with Liverpool so well with, with his attitude. But it may also be time for that Klopp will just say hang it up and maybe even go into coaching retirement. Because I think after doing Liverpool, he will need a break. That much I can say. Let's get into the FA Cup round which happened already last weekend of January it seems like a long time ago and on my daughter's birthday we had the big matchup between Manchester City and Arsenal however as soon as I saw all the lineups I thought yeah this is typically FA Cup of course I was gonna watch that one of course I knew that they will not play the first uh, squads although Manchester City did it more than Arsenal did I really like the attitude of Arteta in a way of saying okay if we lose big, then it is because we play the second string squad. If we don't lose all that big, then yeah, we are quite competitive, even with the second string squad. And it was more the second part. But the other thing that has tested with it, Arsenal really played overall quite well in that game. However, there were not many chances. It was a rather boring game to watch. That was then decided by, you know, there was a short moment of brilliance for City. Uh, where Grealish then plays it back to Ake, who puts it into the net with a nice, a nice shot. And that was that. I mean, I never felt that Arsenal could come back. I actually thought that would you have brought on the Sinjankos and the Odegaards a little bit sooner, you might have had a better shot. Because overall, Arsenal, I don't want to say they were in super control because they didn't create that many chances. But they hung in there with a the, uh, prime CAC score, so maybe they can take some positives out of that. Other than that, I mean, not too many surprises uh, that we can see in the FA Cup. I also didn't watch too much on, on honestly, just a few highlights that, that we have. We had uh, Leicester moving also from the Premier League. Fulham had to go, has to go in a replay against Sunderland. Um, we have Leeds against Accrington, uh, Stanley moving on Tottenham at Preston North End, United easing uh, past Reading, but uh, that was expected. I think the only um, not notable thing is that a Rashford series of home goals was snapped because, uh, yeah, a goal was disallowed that shouldn't have been disallowed in, in a way. I think it was another weird offside call, but you know, Manchester United uh, with that goal in the derby. It's fine. And then, of course, it was all about Brighton against Liverpool, where Liverpool, though, taking the lead through Harvey Elliott, but Dunk very quickly equalizes it then in the second half. I mean, it was Liverpool hang, hanging on. And just when you thought they will force the replay or so on, uh, it is a brilliant piece by Mitoma, who takes an uh, Estupinian cross, controls this, I think, with the right foot, and then with the same foot, yanks it into it. I absolutely wonderful brilliant goal and fully deserved and this was kind of the first one yeah liverpool is now out of the next competition uh in the um, league it doesn't look good and so a team that played every single game and was well in the, in the running to make four trophies in one year it was there it was literally right there not going to bring home a trophy this year round because I don't see Liverpool winning this Champions League either. But hey, who knows? Uh, but yeah, Brighton does the job again over Liverpool. It was a little bit tighter, but in over, in the larger scheme of things, it's, it is a showcase for a rotten season. With West Ham beating Derby County, we also have a few replays. And one of those is probably from the a game of the round. Um, when uh, Wrexham took on Sheffield United playing out a 3-3 uh, 
Uh, absolute crazy game where uh, Wrexham were down at the half, one goal. Uh, then take twice the lead. The second lead was even with a man up. Um, in this 86, you think they are through. And then a very late equalized by Sheffield United forces the replay. And Wrexham, yeah, fifth uh, league team with a documentary and so on are going on. We already had one replay with Blackburn uh, moving on over Birmingham City. Uh, the only Premier League team is, of course, Fulham, who have to again go to Sunderland. Then we had the little uh, notion of the League Cup. Uh, and as I said, and now I decided, okay, let's cover that, that, that one. Again, look, uh, I decided to make the logo commercial free as I usually do for competitions. Uh, in a way, it was a foregone con conclusion. I mean, Newcastle against Southampton. Newcastle came out, played very well, scored to go through Longstaff. Adams put one back, but then they just controlled the game, played at home. However, Guimaraes got sent off rather idiotically and has to miss quite a few Premier League games, which actually means that uh, he's gone, gonna miss, and that's a big loss for uh, Newcastle United. Manchester United, their opponents in the final, also easing over Nottingham Forest. Martial and Ferez scoring the two goals in short succession, but it was kind of late in the game, around 15 minutes ago. So we have to, it's the end of the month. A battle of United, Manchester United, Newcastle United at Wembley. It's a very traditional duel. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, honestly, this could be a fun final. But, you know, we have said that before. The last League Cup final was, was a classic despite having no goals, but then a very epic penalty shootout. That brings us to a league. All the big signings for Chelsea don't amount to much. Fulham kind of deserved their nil-nil uh, there. And then the shocker of the weekend. Uh, we had, of course, Sean Dyche being uh, appointed manager for Everton. Yes, Everton already looked very anemic under Frank Lampard, but the problems are not only on the bench, they are up in the boardroom. This club, from all that I hear, read, see, there is a real rot in there and they need to find their identity. Again, uh, fans being up in arms. Uh, it's, it's a really a sad state of affairs. However, I think they got the right coach. I mean, the shortlist for the coach was coaches was either Barcelo Bielsa or Sean Dyche, which two completely opposing styles. Fortunately, I really think fortunately, fortunately, because I don't want a team like Everton going down. This is one of the big, big, big teams. This is like if I would rip, uh, le, let's say, a Lazio, a Fiorentino, a Roma out of Serie A. That's the, the status for Everton in the Engl in English game. So, uh, I really want them to stay in just for his, 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 his history's sake. I mean, if I would make my ideal uh, 18 or 20 team prime Premier League, um, Everton is definitely 7th or 8th, even before on the sheet. So, just saying, saying, saying that. And I think Vishal Dash, they got the right coach. And you could already see, yes. Arsenal was definitely hindered by a wobbly pitch that didn't allow to have them the smooth passing game. And I'm not sure how much the Sean Dyche has to do with that. However, he also organized them well. He kind of put a masterclass out there. It was a resilient team and, you know, just fresh ears. And suddenly we have a fight and suddenly we even get a goal through Tarkovsky. And that makes it so much easier to play against Arsenal. If you are in the league because you can continue defending because if you would have stayed nil 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 60 70th and and, and and so you get tired but now with the lead you just get another boost it's an absolutely amazing result and at that point i thought oh we might have the title race back on because at the moment arsenal seems so in control fortunately it was not uh, quite that to be uh, a really entertaining game was between Villa and Leicester. Villa taking twice the lead in the first half, still going into halftime 3-2 down through uh, Madison, Iannaccio and Tete goals. Uh, and then um, Leicester makes it 4-2. Brentford disposing of Southampton. Southampton, unfortunately, is a team going down. And I'm really, really sad because I, act, a, I like the jersey that they played in and I would like to have it on the other side. I, I mean, <laughs> For what? You know, at the moment I'm buying jerseys of teams that I don't like only if they serve myself in the, in, in, in the background. So I'm a, a little bit of a picky there, but you know, I might still pick, pick it up. 
Uh, Brighton get a late goal. Winner again. Again, Mitoma. Who else? United. I uh, have actually no trouble beating Palace 2-1. The problem was that Casemiro got sent off uh, for grabbing an op opponent, but uh, well, I think the sand sending off is just justified upon the action. It, for me, it's ridiculous that he was the only one sand sent off because at least Schlup had to be sent off as well. And probably as well. there's a real melee, and I think Schlup would have deserved a red card there as well. I think it was not very well handled by the referee. Schlup then even gets the goal back. And then the moment that Austria was waiting for, we have finally an Austria playing for Manchester United and Marcel Savica, who were just coming in. Yeah, Percy, I do not care, but it's a big deal in the Austrian news and for the Austrian soccer community, which is very um, Anglophone in uh, many a way. Wolves within 12 minutes to hold it up. I mean, Liverpool, an absolute shambles. I said it already at the beginning of of, of the video. Uh, and there was no coming back, honestly. I mean, the room never should make me, make me 3-0. But the, from the little that I saw, I mean, from the hard hard that I saw, so it looks dour. It looks really, really, really bad. And this is a team that you play for the third time in short succession. Uh, and yeah, it's also that uh, Lopetegui is doing a really good job at Wolves. Well, uh, get, get him out, and we might have a real relegation battle. Newcastle only won one against West Ham United. The equals are coming to Paqueta. I mean, they scored uh, two, two of the first three minutes. One didn't count. Um, Paqueta equalizing, then kind of making some saltos, but uh, messing those up as, as well, and then they cannot find a winner. I honestly, I have to have to say, without Bruno Guimaraes, a that's a problem. Second of all. I think Newcastle play very well against good opponents, but against some middling opponents, um, they don't have yet this idea that, you know, we have to make the game and break them down. That will have to come. Uh, and maybe this is where I always thought that Newcastle, I'm not so sure how are they with top four. This might be just an early run like we had with Leicester and so on before. But in the, in the end, it will probably be a, be a Europa League finish and potentially a League Cup trophy. Uh, Forest who have now uh, Kayla Navas for some reason. Again, Premier League going crazy. Beat Team USA 1-0 for a wonderful uh, Johnson goal. And then Spurs 1-0 over City, uh, basically keeping everything in Arsenal's corner, which I'm not sure Spurs are so happy, but Spurs definitely want to go in top, top four. City have not won, let alone scored a goal, or let alone got, got, got a point in the new Tottenham Stadium. That is a statistic that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the game seemed to be at the beginning going totally serious way. I mean, Spurs were just defending. And with the first time, the uh, Heuberg intercepts uh, a, a play out and a play plays onto Kane, 1-0. Completely against the run, the run of play. But then there was nothing coming from City, except I think Mares hit the crossbar. But that was all. Did not look good. At all and Spurs actually probably should, 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 should score, uh, score the second. Romero getting sent off with a second yellow. Uh, made it a little bit tighter, but in the end, a fully deserved one little win for Spurs. And Harry Kane is also not a top scorer, but you know, I don't like totals. I like more averages or so on. Uh, so yeah, but he overtakes Jimmy Greaves, who of course is a big name. With all that, let's look at the current Premier League standings. We have, of course, um, Arsenal still up top, Manchester City still behind, it's still, it's very close, but Arsenal are still the favourites, but just a tad, United now in third, and then Liverpool all the way down at 10, Chelsea just ahead of them as well, so those two strugglers there, let's see where, where this will go, Brentford and Fulham and Brighton, those are the surprises of the season for two of which, well, for all three of which I probably need a jersey, more than I would need the Southampton a bit jersey, although I like I like that one. I think two South Coast teams will go down and then it will be a real dogfight. Nottingham Forest is up in 13th at the moment. I would though argue that from Crystal Palace down, it could get tight. I think Villa is just about safe. Um, you see, I mean, and it's really hard for me to say who should go down because those are all teams that I would act, uh, that I definitely would like to have in my ideal Premier League. So yeah, uh, Let's see, but uh, Leeds, West Ham, Wolves, Leicester, 
Palace, not nothing in Hampton Forest, it's going to be a definite dogfight. Um, if you look at the expected set, it's still Everton going down, but now they go from last place into 18th, so they have they have a chance. Up top, we see the top top four, the two North London teams, the two Manchester teams. Sounds really reasonable. Liverpool now only in fifth place, and I think Liverpool will continue falling, and Newcastle also falling out of there. And then Brighton already ahead of Chelsea. I'm, I would be really so pr uh, surprised, but also kind of, kind of happy if Brighton. And you see, they, uh, it's expected to be a four-point di uh, di difference. This is huge. Would love it if Brighton would finish up there, honestly, because they definitely would deserve that one. Upcoming games in the Premier League. You already saw for the replays for the Cup and so on, uh, which happen already tonight or tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday evening. We have on Wednesday a makeup game between United and Leeds. That's we have the, for the Queen's funeral, of course, a big traditional derby. But United should wipe the floor with Leeds the way they're going. Then on the weekend, the big one is of course the Merseyside derby between Liverpool and Everton, which is the late game uh, on Monday already. Uh, Leicester Spurs usually gave us good stuff. Arsenal Brentford is also kind of a rivalry. We have another London derby there between West Ham and Chelsea. I think there's quite some interesting stuff in there. City have to play against Aston Villa, the Grealish derby, if you would like. Uh, then we have a big makeup game Arsenal against Manchester City. And I hate it that this butts against the Champions League because I will have a hard time choosing here. Because it might well be that Arsenal against Manchester City is the better game. That whatever the Champions League throws up, and that's not good, and I probably will have. I, I have to see if I can second screen it somehow, because uh, that's that will be a real shame if I cannot watch that one. But you know, let's see how that will go. But that's a huge game, and City needs to get a win if they want to have any chance of uh, catching Arsenal. And then on the weekend after, Arsenal have to play Villa. City have to play at Nottingham Forest. Probably the easier duel. We have uh, Brighton against Fulham. That could be a very interesting one. And then, of course, we have another London double between uh, Spurs and West Ham United. That's it for me from England so far. No, I'm not. I'm still sitting in Austria, but you know, from uh, what I can tell you about the English league, quite a few interesting things going on. Uh, it might well be that it will take me two weeks to get to the next video. Although, let's see how things shake up. Maybe I will do one sooner, but I decided to give you a little bit more. Any case, please let me know what you thought was uh, on the happenings in England. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will surely talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!